So what is it you guys want to talk about? 2020. A year whose story couldn't be told until now because it was still happening. Don't be filming this for one of those casual introductory shots, please. It's demeaning. Oh man, no, 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 let's demean. Go, go, go. Welcome to Cord Killers, the show about watching the stuff you love when you want, where you want, however you want. I want you to know, I'm Tom Merritt. Hey, I'm Brian Brushwood, but most importantly, the real star of the show is 2020. Am I right? What do you say, Bryce? Uh, that is a trailer. Finally, we got a trailer for Death to 2020. That's a comedy special from Black Mirror's Charlie Brooker and Annabelle Jones. That's coming to Netflix December 27th. We talked about this last week, and we didn't know what it would be, but now it's a faux documentary, basically. Right. A uh, uh, faux-cumentary. Well, uh, well <clears throat> I'll <clears throat> tell you who's a real Definitely person. Definitely a space in there. Is Tinvec joining Woo! us live on the show? Oh, hey. hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, fantastic. wanted cord killer Alex Hanna, aka Tinvec. Welcome to the show. Is there a, a cord top? mass murderer? He once <laughs> took out. Do you ever hear about the uh, 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 what is it? The um, uh, the BNC slicination of 2017. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you chuckled at that, Tom. <laughs> Uh, VNC, of course, stands for very not chords anymore because I, I killed them. Actually, I meant BNC, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. BNC Music Factory. No, oh, BN, no. BNC, like the type of token ring connector. It's a kind of Yes, such a that's what I thought yes. you meant. Like Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Okay, got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Primary target. Primary target. Do it. Do it. Run. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, peace in our time with honor. Roku and Warner Media reached an agreement. <laughs> We're just crushing it. <laughs> Roku and Warner Media reached an agreement, and now the HBO Max app is available on Roku. If you haven't gone and looked at your Roku to find it, well, go to it. It's right there. The details were not announced publicly about how they reached this agreement, but we can divine a few things. HBO is no longer available as an add-on to the Roku channel. That was one of the dispute points. So it looks like Warner Media won that fight somehow. Roku also won't get any HBO content for free to add to the Roku channel. That was another thing Roku wanted. It does sound like Roku will get a cut of ad sales when HBO Max launches a free ad-supported tier next year. Uh, Roku users who have subscribed to HBO through the Roku channel will have their app automatically updated to HBO Max if they have the HBO app. Uh, HBO Max also coming to Comcast's Xfinity X1 box and the Sony PlayStation 5. So with the Roku deal, Xfinity X1 and PlayStation 5, it's now available on pretty much every major platform. Uh, the last of our battles that we're still watching smoldering away as 2020 ends is uh, Peacock still not available on Amazon Fire TV, but HBO Max has ended all its wars, Brian. Yeah, uh, let me tell you something, Tom. If there's one thing I like more than news that empowers people who are ready to cut the cord, it's news that empowers people who cut the cord that we totally predicted and confidently said, even though a bunch of people emailed us saying, whoa, man, Roku isn't on uh, TVs, blah, 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 or whatever. HBO Max isn't on Roku. Whatever. We were right, and we totally, it was, it was, it was pretty plain that HBO Max um, has pretty much won Christmas. Would that be accurate? Well, with Wonder Woman 1984, I mean, I, it's hard to say how much Wonder Woman 1984 coming out on December 25th affected this, but it definitely affected it. It's only a matter of figuring out how much. Well, and uh, I have another Dark Horse candidate for movie that drove this. Uh, I believe, according to my wife, she hit me up uh, via text today asking, how do I get HBO Max to work on my phone? And I was like, why do you care? She says, it's the only place I can find Die Hard. And uh, then I realized that there's two Christmases to win. Uh, that might uh, be a little extra nudge, not enough on its own, but I definitely agree. like push you a little farther towards that that agreement. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, Alex, when's the last time you bought a TV, and why is it going to have a Roku with HBO Max on it this Christmas? <clears throat> oh, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm a Chromecast guy. Ah. <laughs> like, I, I don't even I don't even want to like deal with anything on my TV. Just let me do it on my phone, throw it up to the TV, or from my computer to the TV, and be done with it. I mean, that said, I appreciate a lot of HBO Max shows, you know, particularly lately Lovecraft Country is, was amazing. Um, so I'm happy to see them in more places. And this is just 
this is what Netflix did eight years ago or whatever it was, you know, where so, they so, so Netflix is the everything. Simpsons did it of this whole thing. Yes. Yes. And, and next year it'll be uh Disney plus with, um, uh, black widow coming out. Like, uh, uh, among, uh, although Disney plus is already available on platforms. Yeah. They, they, Disney plus didn't have any problem getting on the platforms. Maybe they'll renegotiate. Who knows? Yeah, so, so, uh, a uh, question, Tom, did you feel a wave of smug satisfaction or did you ever feel any real tension at all about whether or not this was going to come together by Christmas? Cause no, na- now I'm, we I'm, could confidently act like we knew how it was going to go the whole time. I was, it was never in doubt that this agreement will happen. I also know that Peacock and fire TV will have their agreement, uh, an agreement by the end of the year, maybe not until Warner announced Wonder Woman 1984 coming to HBO Max on Christmas Day. Then I started to feel like, all right, Roku's going to want to figure this out. Uh, and great move by Warner Media to, to get it done. Uh, and, and certainly announcing that all the movies for the rest of 2021 from Warner Media will come out on HBO Max day and date was another nice nudge. I mean, Warner Media, if all their if their only consideration was winning this battle, they they played it perfectly. I think there were other reasons why they made those moves, but it certainly helped them in these negotiations. And now, whatever agreement they have for rev sharing on advertising with Roku is the precedent from which future no- negotiations will be set. And that's what this was all about. That's what all the springsmanship was about was we want to set the tone at the beginning when it's new because every other negotiation from now on about these platforms in the future will be how much can we add or subtract from whatever number we agree to now. Man, I just had this flash of like what I would give to see the behind the scenes negotiations uh, during, as you put it, the, br- the brink- brinksmanship uh, as in the court of public opinion, HBO Max, Max is just leveraging all of this publicity, all of this newsworthiness, all of this good feelings. And how does that translate into money? And then it hits me that I'm literally describing the plot of Entourage. And then all of a sudden I lost all interest. <laughs> Do you think Ari works for Roku or Warner Media? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> correct. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Yeah, to be a fly on that wall in that room would mean I would want to leave. But I'd I'd be curious. I'd be curious to know to know some more details. I don't think we'll get a whole lot more. Uh, but honestly, by January, everyone's going to have forgot about this. Uh, in fact, they'll probably even forget that Peacock isn't on Fire TV until The Office comes to Peacock. That'll yeah. be the big thing that'll make a bunch of people go, "Wait, why isn't this on Fire TV?" And then Peacock can kind of rev it back up and, and try to get that negotiation going. That is kind of a weird backwards example where it's like of course peacock wants to shout about how they're on all of the platforms but as a negotiation tactic i mean that is the type of show that people will get very upset like where's my peacock i just assumed i got this this platform yeah and and then the 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 olympics should they take place uh this summer uh as as they have been rescheduled to that would be another thing that if they haven't got the deal by then that would be the next thing that peacock can use that NBC Universal could use, but uh, all of this is negotiations. It was never, oh, they'll never get on there or rope. You know, so I, I, I don't personally like uh, picking a side in these things and saying I think Roku's right or I think HBO Max is right because neither one of them are right. They're all just trying to get the best deal. Uh, well, and weirdly, they're all seeking equilibrium, but they just disagree over where equilibrium is in terms of yeah. pleasing people and and reaching out exactly. To- Uh, Now, one thing nobody disagrees with is that Equilibrium looks an awful lot like us getting $1 per episode of Cord Killers. Mm -hmm. And it's Mm -hmm. possible if you go to patreon.com slash Cord Killers. That's right. You and I do have this agreement. I say at least a dollar an episode. You say no more than a million dollars an episode. And we we Uh, go back and forth. Without without special uh, permission, which I give you right now. Okay. All right. Well, if you want to do more than a million per episode, that's your prerogative. Peace in our time has been achieved. And it's thanks <laughs> With to honor. our 1,000 plus beautiful bosses. Boy, that was, we landed that after all, didn't we? <laughs> all at patreon.com slash cord killers. You get your own RSS feed. You get early access. You get everything all together. And you get special secret access to our after talk program where we speak candidly, sometimes not about movies and TV. It's what we want for Christmas. Is your money. You may not celebrate Christmas, but we do. So buy us something 
a, for a dollar. That's all we're asking. Yeah. Patreon.com slash court killers. Or less than a million dollars or more than a million dollars. Or more. Or more. We're not stopping you. That's where the equilibrium comes in. All right. Let's talk about how to watch. Uh, a couple different things here. Netflix began rolling out a new audio only feature for its Android app. Uh, users with the feature can now select a video off button during playback, which will then make the screen blank. It'll leave the playback controls up there so you can rewind, fast forward, etc. The app also now has an audio off setting, which lets you turn the audio off and leave the video running uh, that lets users automatically turn the audio off depending on the output source. That way, if you your headphones become unplugged. It wouldn't start blaring out, that kind of thing. Uh, most people are excited about the the audio-only feature if they want to just listen to a show as they're walking around, running around, doing other things. Well, and as we've discussed before, Netflix has been laying the groundwork for, what, almost almost four years on this? I, th I think it was the first time we talked about the, the extraordinary uh, visually yeah, yeah. impaired audio descriptions and how good Netflix's Daredevils was w without it. Um, uh, this cannot come to iOS fast enough for me, man. This is like all of my my binge watching in audio format. I, I love it. Uh, are you an iOS? I assume you're an Android guy if you like Chromecast, Alex. Yeah, yeah, I'm an Android person. I actually just got Pixel 5 not long ago. Uh, no, you're a human person. And I need you to stop getting <laughs> confused about that. Okay, you know, the person's in <laughs> the world, though? so I figured... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, this is, this is cool and all, but like when YouTube did this, I was... Initially, I was like, well, but why? I, I watched video on YouTube, right? Like, that's literally what it's for. But then I, you know, like, there's a lot of music and comedy stuff that, that makes a lot of sense. And so I guess this works for Netflix. It's just not for me. You know, oh, I dude. prefer my, my I, audio I with video. <laughs> would not be surprised if, uh, first of all, this happens, it becomes ubiquitous in handheld devices. Wouldn't be surprised if two to three years later, there became, and we've talked about this, how I love the idea of, you know, video DJs, call them VJs for short. It's an idea I just made up. Uh, yeah. But 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 who, yeah, sure. who will take you on tours of things. Like I could totally imagine in vaguely podcast format, hey, this is so-and-so, I collected a bazillion D comics and I want to tell you, now we're going to go through Daredevil. There's a couple of big visuals that you may not understand. Let, let me take some time to paint some pictures you're about to experience in this episode, and then off you go to experience the radio drama version of, of, of a great Marvel uh, season. I, I, I just think there's increasing uh, more and more potential in all this space. Yeah, I, I yeah, like that absolutely. VJ thing. Yeah, we'll see if it turns into something. You should call it MTV on. for mediated TV. That's great. Uh, also, empty V for empty video, <laughs> which is what I'll be there's watching. a black screen. That's right. No yeah, audio. That's right. There's no video. It's 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 video without the video. It's empty video. Hold on, let me get a break. All right, here's one. Here's one Alex will like. Uh, Apple's Apple TV app will arrive on Google platforms like Android TV and Google TV, but starting with the Chromecast early next year, it'll be able to stream in 4K HDR with Dolby Vision and Atmos, and you'll be able to see Apple TV content in voice search results through Google Assistant. Uh, for those who, who don't realize, Apple TV's app, when it's not on an Apple device, uh, includes all of the Apple TV Plus stuff, the channels you can add, and anything in your iTunes library. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, how excited on a scale of one to uh, uh, WandaVision are you? I'd give it half a WandaVision. Um, mostly just because not only am I not in the Apple ecoverse, like I don't have Apple TV or iTunes, or nor do I see a reason to, given all the other options. Uh, I think that's the way a lot of people that tend to have Android phones are, or Android devices are. So it's cool. I always love more availability. How useful is it? Mm, question mark. What if, you know, like, maybe Ted Lasso isn't the thing that you're like have to watch? Maybe for all mankind isn't. But what? What about when that show comes along? You're like, man, I really want to watch that. Now you have the opportunity. Does that? Do you think that would change it? Oh, absolutely. And that's that's the same with HBO Max. Like, I didn't I didn't want HBO Max for the last season of Game of Thrones. Like, like I just bailed, you know, why, why would I care? But now they have better shows on like, you know, Westworld is, I, I still kept it for Westworld. And like I said, Lovecraft country was just astounding. So it's that same thing. Like if you have something that's good, I'm happy to pay for and watch your service. But if you don't have anything that's really drawn me or something that, you know, nobody else has, that's really great. Then meh. Yeah. All right. Look, 
Uh, Tom was real nice, but let me just get you. I'm gonna, I got to pin you down on this. On behalf of all androids, why do androids hate Ted Lasso? <laughs> is it is it that he's too I, human, too lovable, that must too be enchanting? Yeah. His plight it's, is too heroic. Be. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, it needs needs more metal. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> That Ted Lasso is also one of those things that you don't, I can see it like I'm Chromecast user. I've got Apple TV app. Don't really care to install it. Ted Lasso is not going to make you install it. Ted Lasso is the kind of show where you watch it and then realize what you've been missing. It's hard to, right. to get people to take, make an effort to watch. It. Well, and the problem is that. like uh, people like you and me, Tom, are not helping things <laughs> when we no. <laughs> increasingly sound like Apple fanboys yes. <laughs> singing the praises of the show. Uh, and, and I'm not going to deny that it took me getting COVID before I really gave Apple TV Plus a chance. And so um, I'm not saying you should get COVID. I'm not saying. <laughs> right. That's, that's probably right. the worst reason to get Apple TV Plus. Uh, <laughs> should not be in the commercials it was, it was a free week <laughs> Fair. all right folks uh you do not have to get covid to try apple tv plus but it is available on more platforms now so go check it out if you want to let's talk about what to watch in under surveillance Zack Snyder said a lot of things about his cut of Justice League to Entertainment Weekly. Uh, we'll, we'll just touch on a few of them. Uh, first, he thinks it will be R-rated. Uh, that's in part because Batman says the F word and Steppenwolf cuts people in half, but there's a few other reasons in there too. Uh, Snyder also thinks that Warner will release it in a theatrical experience along with the premiere on HBO Max in March 2021. So you might get a chance to not only watch it at home on HBO Max, but if you want to go to the theater and watch it, uh, Zack Snyder is saying you might get the chance to do that. There's, I don't want to indulge in too much Kremlinology here, uh, but but it's kind of interesting when <laughs> to hear a director say, I think it'll be this because Batman definitely says this word. Like, Hey, dude, you're the guy who gets to make that call, whether or not he says that word, which is like, are you saying that for us, the fans, or are you saying that? No, no, to, uh, I, uh, I took it as he's going to say this word. I think that means they'll give it an R rating, but they haven't rated it yet. So I can't say for sure. Yeah, but it definitely says there's no way he doesn't say that word, right? Like that, right. that might as well be a press release in tattoo across his chest. Batman says the F. <laughs> yeah, I think he just he just can't. You can't guess what the rating they're going to give it is because there's times where you can, you can get away with an F word in a PG-13 movie, you know, but given everything else, I highly expect this to be R as, as it probably should have been from the beginning. Like, Yeah, I guess what I took is the, the beneath the surface press release of these things are not going to change uh, after the whole reason this exists is because the fans had an uprising wanting to see my vision. These are things I'm not going to back down on. Batman says the F, uh, uh, what's his name, tears the people in half. Uh, and then, uh, um, uh, and, and if that's an R, then so be it. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, you, so you think this is a little public negotiating for Zack Snyder. I mean, uh, we, 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 our, our main story was about exactly HBO Max doing that and about uh, how Peacock's getting ready to do the exact same thing. So much of this plays out kind of in public, unspoken. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and also in one of the interviews, he, he, he said that the whole uh, announcing that all the movies in 2021 will, will go to HBO Max through a wrench in the works. Uh, so, yeah, he, he wasn't trying to be nice to his company that's letting him do this because uh, he knows he's got some, some capital with the fans there. Yeah, for sure. At the end of The Mandalorian last week, Disney announced a new show called The Book of Boba Fett which will come to Disney Plus December 2021. That might explain why Disney announced two Mandalorian spinoffs last week during their investor day, but only said that a Mandalorian spinoff would come out next December alongside The Mandalorian. We speculated that they hadn't decided which one. Sounds like they had. They just hadn't announced that one yet. Uh, the series will be executive produced by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. And sorry, Brian Robert Rodriguez. Uh, it will <laughs> take like place no in the same it's... general time frame as The Mandalorian. Uh, all right. Now for a completely unbiased opinion, we go to somebody who's not wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. Tinvek. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Mandalorian? I'm not familiar with this show. Uh, it's uh, pronounced Mandalorian. There's an A. Mandal, excuse me. Yeah. We all call him Mando, though, you know, because he's, he's a bro. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, this this would be good. Um, there was there was initial worry when when this first you know popped up on, on the day that it would that was like the subtitle for the season three, and and then it was it was oh, clarified that, later. No, th- no, no. There was th- some chatter that they separate. were maybe going to replace like uh, who's who, who's the real Mandalorian. Right. Well, which we all know Boba is not. Um, <laughs> which they went out of their way to highlight several times in the show itself. But yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, this this I think it'll be really interesting, and I would love to see um, spoilery free um, the Mandalorians get together and do their thing, and Boba <laughs> Fett does his thing, and they do these separately, but at that the was... same time, and then we kind of get get them to come together later and have a final showdown. I don't know what you want to call it, but I think there'll be a little bit of crosstalk between these kind of, kind of like um, agents of shield with, with the Marvel movies oh, yeah. sort of. No, the love boat's going to dock at fantasy Island between these two, for sure. <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> right. and, and also uh, kudos to you for uh, negotiating that difficult minefield. It was like you performed a, some run in some number of parsecs. I'd, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amazon Prime Video is filling its slate with NFL-related program this week, uh, including a December 25th stream of the Viking Saints game, which will also be on television. Uh, That's all leading up to an exclusive stream that will not be on television in most places of the San Francisco 49ers versus the Arizona Cardinals Saturday on both Prime Video and Twitch. That game will be available to all Prime Video subscribers in the world unless you live in China, the UK, Ireland, and Spain, where there are competing agreements on airing football. The game will also be broadcast over the air in Arizona and San Francisco so that local fans can see it even if they don't have Prime Video. Prime Video viewers will be able to choose which broadcast crew they would like to listen to for both games. Uh, Tinvec, what kind of, are you an NFL person? Are you a sports ball guy? I'm a, like, I really only watch it with other people. So I would like go to somebody's house and we'd hang out and watch football. I'm not really super into it otherwise, but I do really like the idea of being able to choose a broadcast crew. That's kind of interesting. Cause then like this kind of opens up things going forward of like, if we digitize more sports, like, or, or put sports more on digital platforms like this, that may give more options for the listener to like, you know, bandersnatch their way through it and, and pick the way that they want to listen. You know, it's interesting because in politics, uh, a lot of people resent the fact that everyone gravitates to their own politically bent bubbles. But in sports, we've had that for years and years. And it's called, you know, it's been geographically based instead of digitally. And so now we're just bringing, you know, the early 20th century into the modern age. Uh, I'll say that I watched last week's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video, and it was very easy in that you pull up the app and it was like the first thing on the marquee. But I, I, I wonder how it looks like when you have the option for broadcast crews. I don't know. Maybe I'll watch this and report back. It's, uh, there'll be a, a button you either tap or click, depending on how you're looking at it. And then it'll give you a drop down that says this crew or that crew. Hmm. Um, now, how easy it will be for you to decide based on the information they give you in a <laughs> drop down menu, I don't know. Yeah. I think they're probably presuming some familiarity with the personalities involved. But otherwise, it was very easy, a very, I mean, it was pretty much exactly what you would have seen on Fox uh, the same day without any hiccups. So. Yeah. Uh, Disney's going to release a clip show called Marvel Studios Legends that will catch you up on the lore around particular characters from the universe. The first two episodes will focus on Wanda Maximoff and Vision, debuting January 8th, 2021, a week before WandaVision. So you can brush up on those two characters before you watch the show that has them in it. All right. I'm not going to say that Disney has a time machine and stole my idea of VJs from me before I even spoke it. But I will point out that this is pretty similar to the catch up webisodes that they did for Battlestar Galactica. And they they took on a really interesting tone where they would call out kind of weird stuff like in the future, this important thing happened, that important thing happened, and pages don't have corners, you know, and silly joke. And then they would, t- but, but, but the important part is that in five minutes, you could pretty much dive into Battlestar Galactica along with the rest of the world. And it sounds to me like they're trying to fill that void. Now, whether or not they do it with the same kind of, you know, wink and a nod, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, but I liked it. I liked it when Battlestar Galactica did it. Yeah, I think it'll be really good. And like, imagine, Brian, that they had this for Clone Wars for you. Uh, yes, in fact, that would be the only way I would want to want to experience the Clone Wars. In fact, the only way that would be better is if they sent an android whose name was Alex to describe him to me before I went to bed each night. I mean, 
give me a call. We can work something out. Okay, right on. <laughs> you got a Patreon yet? <laughs> uh, uh, no, I don't, but uh, maybe. <laughs> I, th I think that uh, what what I like about this is the idea that even though I've seen all the movies and watched all the shows, uh, I've forgotten a lot because it's a lot to remember. And so this this is a good refresher, even for people who aren't joining, uh, unlike Battlestar Galactica, where it was meant for people who, who maybe had missed parts of seasons. This is like, look, we know you've watched it all, but you know, you don't remember it, right? Uh, so here you go. Watch. MTV, Marvel Television. There, there is something, so, yeah, I told you, they have a time machine. The, uh, I took it. It, 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 does, it. it does remind me of how in the lifetime of this very program, we've watched the art of the previously on become developed, where it's kind of a subtle nod as to, hey, I'm not going to say what's in this episode, but it seems to me like over the next three or four minutes, you might, might want to take a moment to remember certain things that have happened over the last five seasons, et cetera. I'll probably try this to for, for WandaVision and, and see if it's worthwhile or if it all seems obvious, et cetera. See how helpful it is. Uh, John Larroquette is coming back to star in a Night Court sequel series, not a reboot, but a sequel to be written and executive produced by Dan Rubin, who also worked on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. It will focus on the character Harry Stone's daughter, Abby Stone, who will play an optimistic judge like her father in Night Court. Warner Brothers TV will make the show for NBC, so it looks like it's meant to air on NBC, but probably also available on Peacock. This has tremendous potential. Uh, Alex, before we dive in, were you, were you a big fan of Night Court or do you, do you have a strong opinion one way or the other? I did like Night Court. Um, I was probably a little young for a decent amount of the humor in it, but at the time, but it was still hilarious. Like I found it really funny. And so I think it has a, a wide audience to, to draw from. Here, I here's don't know how I feel about a sequel. Uh, we'll, uh, well, so so here's what I'm optimistic about. This has the potential. We've we've seen the roadmap of just how good a, a zombie program can be in Cobra Kai. They took the dead and buried Karate Kid franchise and they figured out a great way to inject real life into it, real drama, real passion, real comedy, real self-awareness, so many great things about it. So we know it's possible. Whether or not they do it remains to be seen. But in an age where John LaRoquette already played a cynical uh, D bag and Harry Anderson played a optimistic seeing the good and people judge. Uh, this feels like an opportunity to just crank up the contrast on those two and bring us maybe a, a, a more um, visceral or powerful version of that dynamic. But, but it, I, I, I think there's a pretty good chance. Yeah. yeah I, I like watch. the idea of a sequel better than a reboot myself. So I, I'm, I'm glad to see they're not, they're leaving Harry stone to be Harry stone. I'm oh, going to see a different. Oh, I thought you were going to say unturned. Oh, I should have. How did you How miss, did that? miss that? How did you walk oh. past that? <laughs> Man, I rolled right by it. All right. Uh, so <laughs> the other thing, the other thing I got out of this story is I didn't remember that Night Court ran for nine seasons. I, I remember it as being more like a five season thing, but it ran for nine seasons. I mean, yeah, they went all through right. all those bailiffs. Uh, the uh, Here are all the notes. Uh, the Game of Thrones prequel House of Dragon uh, will come to HBO and HBO Max in 2022. Uh, it's not a, a date, so to speak, but they, they did promise that it'll come next year. Not, not the next year, but the next year after that, 2022. Uh, Snoopy Show will premiere on Apple TV Plus February 5th, 2021. Apple TV Plus renewed Servant for a third season. Uh, the second season has yet to debut on January 15th. AP Bio has been renewed for season four at Peacock. Netflix's Lock and Key is renewed for a third season. Season two just finished production. It doesn't have a date yet, but it's streaming sometime this year or 2021. The Flight Attendant has been renewed for season two on HBO Max. It just wrapped up season one. Netflix is making a four episode Pope Francis documentary series based on the Pope's book, Sharing the Wisdom of Time. That'll be coming in 2021. TikTok star Charlie D'Amelio and family are getting a Hulu show called The D'Amelio Show coming in 2021. Samuel L. Jackson is going to star in a six episode series called The Last Days of Ptolemy Gray coming to Apple TV+. And Peter Jackson has released a preview of his documentary the Beatles Get Back, which makes use of 56 hours of previously unseen footage. The team is about halfway through the edit and hopes to release in 2021 still. I mean, uh, okay, uh, uh, Peter Jackson, I, I still haven't watched that World War I movie that, that he did. Um, 
uh, but but the idea of of if it's as good as I hope it is, um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a sucker for anything Beatles, so I'm all in on that. Yeah, me too. I, I will definitely watch it just because I want to see ooh new footage I haven't seen before. Yeah, well, and especially as as the shadow of their legends only gets taller and taller. And you know, if you've read, there was a book in the early '80s called uh, uh, "The Love You Make" that was about all the behind the scenes stuff and the idea to essentially get the real like to actually see them goofing around in kind of bootleg format yeah. that's very exciting what about you alex any of these do anything for you uh yeah i'll definitely check out the beatles because you know love the beatles love to see more that, that we haven't seen yet you know that that's always great and um surprisingly i liked lock and key so i'm excited for a second season i, I didn't think i was gonna like it and it was one of those shows on netflix where i'm like nah, let's just see what this is i got nothing else i'm watching and it turned out pretty interesting. So we'll we'll see how they do in the second season. And I like that they got a third. So I'm I'm really stoked that you enjoyed it. Not having it sounds like you hadn't read the the graphic novel going into it. No. Okay. No, not at all. Um, cool. So which I think helped because um, I'm I'm sure like eh, there's always this what's better the book or the TV and you know it's a so like I never had that that background to like hate on anything. It was like wow this is kind of an interesting idea for a show and kind of weird too so like i'm into that and you know it's 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 fun it's fun watch cool all right let's talk about what we've had our eyes on stuff we've been watching and uh alex i know your your choice is one that i could have also chosen because i'm watching this one too i yeah i wanted to get that one in quick so somebody else didn't steal it although i could have talked about discovery also but uh no the expanse uh dropped three episodes at the beginning of the last week and uh, actually there's another one tomorrow it was really good um and really the thing that i just love the most about the show and that they just keep leaning into is the how much they care about real physics and then, like they don't sci-fi trope any of that away i mean they do have a few sci-fi tropes about things but most of it's like no, no, when you're approaching a planet, you got to flip around, fire your engine so you slow down so you don't just smash into the planet and you need to accelerate so you actually have gravity. They don't have like grav plating, they have mag boots, but otherwise, you know, so all of those things just build and build in the show. And then they have this whole, there's this whole political tension that feels really real. And I, I don't know, that's, that's what I like about that show is it's, it feels like the reality I actually live in just in space. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, the, the 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 novels that they're based on do that, lay the groundwork for that because they use real physics as well. And like you say, the one trope they give is an improved drive, the Epstein drive, uh, that lets them go a little faster. But even then, they don't go light speed. They don't jump from Jupiter to Saturn in an instant. Uh, it still takes time. It's just a really fast drive. So they can, you know, maybe speed up a few plot points here and there. But it it's a realistic speeding up even then. Yeah, exactly. And who's to say we won't have fusion drives like that by the time we do colonize space? You know, sure, like, it's reasonable. Getting yeah. there. <laughs> Tom, what no, about I, you? What I love this series, and 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 uh, I can't say enough about it and its crew. Uh, I I'm really enjoying this season, uh, and and the way they're treating what is my favorite book in the series. It, to me, it's the pinnacle linchpin book in the series. And and once again, they're they're just killing it, adapting it uh, for television. I'm enjoying it too. Sorry, I think I stepped on you for a second. Uh, uh, what are you watching, Tom? Oh, Brian, I was just about to ask you the same thing. I'll, but I'll go, since I'll go. My, you my, asked my, my, Mine's first. a short one. Uh, the, uh, I, I offered a pop quiz to Bryce earlier, and I don't know if this has just recently come to the streaming platforms or if they're just now being promoted on there, but I asked Bryce to, uh, I teased that I got my daughters to start watching what is the anime for people who think they hate anime and who are very passionate about how they hate anime because all animes are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Bryce, you correctly came up with one punch, <laughs> one punch man, one punch which man. Uh, is uh, it plays on all the stereotypes and tropes of anime, but somehow it does it with just the right amount of wink and, and detached irony that it's been a blast. Uh, I set my kids up with it. I left when I came back, they were on episode 11 or something. It was awesome. That's great. That's great. So ask me that question again. Uh, hey man, what do you get the anime hater who hates anime? One punch man. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Congrats, you've caught up with Bryce. 
I think he meant asking but, what he's watching. But no, I meant the, the question you asked before you told us about one. Sorry. Punch Man. What do you call a VJ on Marvel's TV? <laughs> oh, uh, you call him Ray. Because, <laughs> it's because he's that's a Ray. the name of all the VJs on Marvel TV. Uh, no, 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 which one uh, watch no. it? I'm glad you asked. The thing I'm <laughs> Mainly because I put it into the bit. <laughs> is his dark materials. And like The Expanse, this is a show I don't feel is getting enough buzz for how good it is. His Dark Materials is on HBO, which means it's also on HBO Max. But even if you don't use HBO Max, it's just on HBO on Mondays, which is part of the reason that it just gets lost. It's not on the normal Sunday like premiere tier. And it's based on the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. Uh, probably The Golden Compass is the most famous of those books, uh, but this season is, is more based on the second novel in the series. Uh, and, and it does pull some from his later writings in the series that are coincident with the first three novels. They're not they're not all chronological in order, but it's fantastic. Uh, the acting's great. The writing's great. Uh, the, the way they're adapting this book uh, is fantastic. And if you want a story about alternate universes and uh, physics meeting theology. Uh, I highly recommend go watch it on HBO Max, His Dark Materials. Hey, Bryce, what should we be on the lookout for? Hey, I got a little bit of a PSA here on On the Lookout today. Oh, no, no, that's OPM for One Punch Man. For official PlayStation magazine. Uh, the cinema-saving feature film Tenet, which is written and directed by Christopher Nolan, is now available for purchase on iTunes, Amazon Prime. Uh, I bought this on iTunes, and I, it's part of Movies Anywhere, so then it showed up on my Amazon Prime when I looked in it the other day. Uh, uh, it's It's... It's it's a it's a it's a movie. It's a it's a very well shot, well executed movie, is what I would say. It was the weirdest thing. I watched you and Justin, mm -hmm. I think, hating on it for forty minutes, and by the end of it, I was like, I've got to see this movie. Yeah, I, so I, we we talked about that on the After Things podcast today. I it's I I very complicated. I think ultimately negative critical thoughts about this movie, but but it is it is a big spectacle. The action is is really good you the the and the 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 way that they handle you know people going forwards in time and people going backwards in time and stuff is is all really really well done really well executed so i think that a lot of people are going to like tenet uh so that is now streaming uh for purchase on the uh video stores you can also rent it in uh i believe two or three weeks and uh if you want more nolan inception is now streaming on amazon prime video in the u.s i believe that it moved around recently. So uh, Amazon Prime Video for that. Uh, Audio only listeners. I should point out that in the video feed, I'm pretty sure maybe a fly like flew in to Bryce's eye right as he was talking about how it'll be for rental in two weeks. <laughs> Either that or he was winking vociferously. I, I couldn't really tell hmm, that was what, was, what that yeah. was about. Yeah. <laughs> I, was just, I was just eye twitching, just God. having to talk good about Tenet. Uh, if you've got something on the lookout <laughs> that we should be on the lookout for, please email us, cordkillers at gmail.com. We got a lot of them lately and uh, it helps have even more. Cord at gmail.com. Thank you. All right, folks, it's the holidays and Brian's family wants to eat. So listen up. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, of course, you could support our uh, programs and our side projects. Mine's over at scamstuff.com. It's gear for the modern rogue. We have a new puzzle box with an exclusive deck of cards, 52 different puzzles, stunts, and adventures for you to go on inside there. Uh, or you could support the show by, look, you got to get a new computer at some point. Why not get one with top quality customer service made right here in the good old U.S. of Texas from our friends over at Doghouse Systems com slash rogue use promo code rogue at checkout that's r-o-g-u-e and you get an ssd don't let brian and four young women starve yes also you need a computer <laughs> move on to the front lines front lines Ah, Nielsen's streaming rankings have The Crown moving into the top spot this week. Uh, Queen's Gambit still holding on to number two, though. It didn't fall very far. The Mandalorian is number four and still the only non-Netflix show in the top ten. Netflix also released some details of its own, saying the Kevin Hart comedy special is drawing record views with 21 million views since November 17th. That's when it premiered. And a company called Real Good has been monitoring Netflix's top ten lists all year. They started back in February, so it's not quite the entire year, but they show that preschool franchise Coco Melon uh, has, by their point accounting, uh, been the number one show 
on Netflix this year, followed by The Office, Queen's Gambit, Tiger King, and Ozark. All right, just so we're clear, before we get to the letters section, you're saying that of the top 10 streaming anythings, the number one, the number, yeah, that's right. I'm spitting fire. That's what it sounds oh like. God, the right. number one brand, The Mandalorian, was not enough to get a Disney Plus more than 10% of the top 10. Or whatever. I'm just saying, get ready for me to be right. Number four, number four, The Office is in front of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, what it's uh, like Peacock. in the next couple of years for Disney Plus. Just saying. Yeah. BBC Studios announced a new streaming service coming next year to the U.S. and Canada called BBC Select. The service will launch as an add-on channel for Apple TV Plus and Amazon Prime Video. It'll feature factual programming and documentaries from BBC Four and Channel Four. Launch date and pricing were not announced. We go live on the scene to confirmed Anglophile Tom Merritt. How excited are you, Tom Merritt? Uh, pip pip. Oh. It's, uh, uh, allow me to translate for our people in the colonies, as you would put it. He's <laughs> ecstatic beyond words. He's already punching a French person. <laughs> That's right. Or as I would call them, a friend that I haven't <laughs> made yet. Uh, yeah, no, this is this is cool. Uh, it's it's documentaries. It's, uh, uh, in all honesty, I'm not that excited about it because I'm not that interested in, in factual programming. <laughs> I sh maybe I should be, uh, but I'm not. Uh, so I'm probably not going to jump uh, right in and, and get this, but it's good stuff. And if you are into, you know, docu-series and, and, and things, this is this is mainlining some of the best in the world. Right on. Wonder Woman 1984 comes to HBO Max and theaters December 25th in the U.S., uh, but it's already out elsewhere in the world. How is it doing? Not that great. $38.5 million worldwide, about half of that coming from China, where it is second to a Chinese movie called The Rescue. Uh, part of that is about marketing. Part of that is about not all the theaters being open, even in China. Uh, it comes uh, to other non-U.S. markets this week, including the U.K., so maybe we'll see a better test of it then. Uh, but U.K. is also shutting down a lot of its theaters, so it's not going to be a great test uh, and in fact, because of that, UK viewers will get a chance to pay to rent it on streaming services starting January 13th. So they've reduced the UK window for Wonder Woman. It will remain in theaters after January 13th. You'll just be able to get it at home. Then. What a perfect nonsensical Rorschach test this is, because like, how do you read these tea leaves, uh, Alex? Do you either A, say, see, this is what happens when you go day and date. All the buzz goes out the window and nobody watches it. Or do you read it and say, see, this is the genius of Warner Media. They knew they had a middling uh, dud on their hands and they're going to maximize it to get everyone on HBO Max. I'm, I'm much more go for the latter of those two. Um, I don't think Wonder Woman, I think, obviously I haven't seen it yet. I, it's not here for me, you know, but um, I will see it. And I don't think that it's... To be honest, they haven't been doing too good with DC movies, like just all around. So it, well, I think it's smarter it, it, just it to is worth pointing get out that Wonder Woman as possible. was sort of the movie that broke that reputation. They they finally started to garner some critical success and, and some enthusiastic box office with it. And then they flushed some of that down the to toilet with subsequent movies. So, you know, mm. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Hot takes. Get, get ready for, for Wonder Woman to show up at your door. Um, <laughs> HBO Max I, has become the, the second streaming service after Netflix to decide not to offer Chappelle's show after Dave Chappelle requested services not offer it until he gets a chance to negotiate a new royalty deal from Viacom CBS, which owns the rights. Uh, I, I mean, this is all I, 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 be Dave Chappelle's friend. We love you, Dave yeah. Chappelle. No, seriously, if, if if you haven't been following this, we've been talking about it. Dave Chappelle knows that there's a contract which legally gives Viacom CBS the right to put this wherever they want and pay him very little. That's the contract he signed. He doesn't dispute that. He just doesn't think it's fair. And he thinks, man, I should have a new deal. And so I'm going to use my influence to shut down distribution on places and ask people not to watch it until I get a new deal. Uh, and so far, Netflix has decided not to do it. And now HBO Max. So good for Dave Chappelle. 
Yeah. NBC Universal CEO Jeff Shell told employees that Peacock has had 26 million signups to date and that Premier League soccer is the top driver of subscriptions and engagement so far. Uh, the number one Peacock original on the service is the Saved by the Bell reboot. And more than half of users have sampled the dozens of always on linear channels that it has. Remember, it doesn't have just on demand stuff. It also has like a Pluto TV style grid as well. So uh, are, are either of you guys necessarily impressed with those numbers given, man, everything just sounds quieter after the Disney Plus announcements, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're not bad numbers, especially for, um, you know, like a, a sort of fledgling app or, or service. It's, it's, they're still pretty new. Um, I, think, I think it'll get better. I think they're doing all yes, right. Yes, Brian, my health insurance does come from Comcast through my wife working for Rotten Tomatoes owned by NBC Universal and their <laughs> wonderful channel on that grid-like service. <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you this much. If you if you went back in time and off, uh, gave me a chance to place a bet, I would not have guessed that at the end of 2020, we'd be so much uh, so excited about HBO Max and, and, and sort of wait, still waiting to see with a lot of Peacock stuff. Uh, Next Star Media Group, the owner of the largest group of local stations in the U.S., as well as WGN America, has announced a carriage deal with Hulu. The deal takes effect January 19th and will bring 20 Next Star owned ABC affiliates to Hulu Plus Live TV or Hulu Plus Live TV, as well as WGN America. Yeah. So, I mean, not everybody's going to care about this story, but if you're a Hulu Live subscriber in one of those markets, uh, you might. So <laughs> there you go. You, you 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 have ABC shows on Hulu Live through this Nash through a national feed, but now you'll be able to get act, you know local news and stuff like that. Uh, this is a funny echo of we just talked about um, being in bubbles as far as sports versus politics goes. It occurs to me that that nowadays when we think of local news, we think about you know kind of our tailored news feeds that are tailored to to our cultural ge uh, geography rather our physical ge geography. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. All right, let's check out the dispatches from the front. Alex in Dallas. That's not Alex Hanna, different Alex. Alex, this is Alex in Dallas. Uh, says, I wanted to join in on everyone saying what streaming services they have and pay for, but I also wanted to mention I'm one of those older millennials that shares my services with others. So I'm going to not only give you all the services, but what I actually spend on them personally. Netflix, $10 a month. VRV, $10 a month. Apple TV Plus, nothing a month. Hulu with live TV, nothing a month. Uh, VRV again, $15 a month, which I think is called Verve. HBO Max, $15 a month. Disney Plus paid for the three-year package prior to launch. YouTube Premium, $4.50 a month. Amazon Prime, $50 a year. Overall, that has me spending roughly $55 a month for all these services. Hope this gives you some more insight on how everyone watches. Thank you, Alex. And then Andrew wrote, given a budget of $50 to $70, to what streaming services do you sign up? The rules. You cannot pick Netflix or Amazon Prime. Uh, Go. Number one, what you do is you become friends with Alex in Dallas. That's A-L-E-X <laughs> in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I mean, su sweet deal if you can get it. Um, uh, I'm not at all familiar with Verve. Uh, did anything jump out as, uh, as must-haves? I would say Apple TV Plus for a limited time. Just watch the whole back catalog and then, you know, be done with it. Uh, I'm surprised to say it, but HBO Max counts uh, yeah. in there. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of stuff on HBO Max, and most of it's HBO, but not all of it. Yep. Uh, Hulu is a slam dunk uh, still, mm -hmm. although it, it, I, I keep forgetting what to do. You know, Disney Plus, of course. Um, uh, I, 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 I haven't dipped a toe into Peacock yet. What about you guys? Uh, no, I haven't used Peacock yet, but I would I would put YouTube Premium on the list. Oh, uh, of I course. Get, I I get mine because I, I, well, I used to have Google Music and now it's YouTube Play Music or whatever various combination of those words they used. Um, but that's totally worth it for me to, because I watch a lot of YouTube just for general stuff. And it's like to never see a commercial again on YouTube other than in video ads. Sure. 
I, I don't count, even though YouTube Premium gives you original YouTube videos, I don't I don't count it as a cord killing subscription for me because same as you, yeah. Alex, I get it because I subscribe to Google Play Music. Uh, and, and so I also get the benefit of no commercials, which is also just a perk of watching YouTube, not a not a source of programming. And and so it it kind of depends on why you have it. If you have it like Alex and I, maybe it doesn't count. But if you have it because you, you're like, no, I love the original videos that I get, then then maybe it should count. Yeah, I, I and as a matter of fact, maybe it, you could make a case if I wanted to, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, debate a little bit. I could make a case that it's dollar per dollar more important because you're directly supporting independent creators and and once you've had a taste of youtube without any of the commercials it's very difficult to give up but uh but also like all of those views they all count and they all make the bottom line a much bigger difference than you're ever going to make in any of the sub other subscription services all right, uh, we have another email from Derek Chen who says, Hi, Tom and Brian. Wanted to chime in on the news that Nielsen is looking to combine linear and digital TV ratings. I was ready to pop the champagne when I saw the headline, though I got a bit sad when I saw how long mm -hmm. it would take to roll out. Still, I'm pretty excited for this, not just as an advertiser, but also as a consumer. If you don't know, Derek uh, works in the advertising industry. We've had him on as a guest before, and he's a great source of information about how this all works. He says 2020 has accelerated the shift from linear to digital TV, and as such, advertising budgets have also shifted towards various forms of advanced TV. The challenge to date is the lack of standardization and reporting, especially when buying across multiple platforms. So knowing what my reach and frequency is in totality remains a challenge. There are some companies offering solutions to give advertisers a better understanding of their buys, but it's still fragmented and limited. Ultimately, the better reporting we can get the more comfortable advertisers will be in putting dollars into digital platforms and programming. It also will help to shift perception of digital TV as part of the norm rather than a one-off separated buy. We can also run into issues of overexposure as multiple advertisers and platforms may be selling the same inventory. For example, let's say I have a spot bought through Linear on a certain program on Fox. However, I might end up running more spots on the exact same show as YouTube TV, Roku, or some addressable platforms are also running my ad in open positions. As we get a better understanding of how and where ads are running, we'll hopefully have better control and targeting so that you don't end up with the same ad running over and over and over again, especially within the same show or network. It's shocking how digital TV planning and buying still feels like the Wild West of advertising, so I welcome a big name sheriff rolling into town, Sheriff Nielsen. Yeah, if I may reduce everything, to oversimplify it to a single analogy. It seems to me, and if I'm wrong, feel free to write us, cordkillers at gmail.com, that in general, the more legitimate the sport, the more attention somebody's paying to the score. For example, at the one end, you've got the Super Bowl. At the other end, you have Hacky Sack. And so I'm going to guess that having somebody who's keeping score matters a lot if what you want to see is more people investing in the sport. Hey, that's a good yeah. sport analogy. Right? My only take is on this is, why is this hard for Nielsen? Like, you can make it, like, you're big enough as Nielsen, a rating company, to be able to talk to these people about their numbers, because Netflix flame, famously doesn't really release theirs. But I'm sure they could get them, you know, more easily that way. I, I just don't understand why it's taking so long. Well, well I it, could wake up in the morning and speak nonstop on Twitch until I go to bed. But... Uh, that will only happen in a world where there's a profit motive for me to invest that level of, of commitment to it. Mm -hmm. And in a world where, yes, Nielsen could track everything all the time with all their agreements or whatever, um, if they go half-assed into this, then they run the risk of, for example, their numbers being uh, 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 called out by Netflix saying like, no, we have the real numbers and those are not the real numbers. Yes, they have the ability, but but they also have to figure out a way. Look, man, referees got to get paid too. That's two sports analogies. I'm keeping wow. score. Wow. That means I'm <laughs> legitimate. <laughs> that was a way better no, that, answer that than sense. my... I was going to make some sarcastic thing like, hey, Nielsen, hire Alex. He apparently thinks this is really easy. <laughs> if you keep Although track you of digs on Alex, Alex. Honestly, it, <laughs> that's yeah. one. Not yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of Alex, uh, thank you for being with us today, man. It was great having you on the show. Absolutely. Oh, it's wonderful to be back on, on the show after so long. It's been it has, long it has been a minute. Where, where's yeah. the best way? Uh, where would you like to direct people's attention? You have a, a Death Star laser of attention right now. I, okay, so I'm not pointing it at Alderaan. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness for once. 
But actually, uh, let's. Why don't we just? Uh, I, I would like to pimp the Diamond Club Streamathon for anybody that has something, nothing to do on, um, you know, December thirty first into the first of the year. Then uh, come join us. There's going to be a lot of shenanigans and uh, about a whole lot of, uh, of yes, yeah, a whole lot of streaming. I don't. I otherwise don't have a whole lot to to promote. Thank you, Dude, that's fantastic. Twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon. Check it out. Yes, sir. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Sarah Lane and I are going to be doing Goodyear Internet as oh, part nice. of that streamathon. Yeah. Very Let's nice. Go check that out, folks. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on twitch.tv slash night attack. Also carried on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk to you with the Killies next week and then off for the holiday break and back in the new year. So have a good one. Hey, Tom Merritt. Yes, Brian Brush. Know who I love even more than my own children? Your other children? No, not my wife. I know what you're saying. I love our $5 patrons. These are the people that keep us alive and independent. Thank you so much, $5 patrons. You know what? I love them more than not life itself, because then I'd be dead and I couldn't appreciate them, but really, really, really close. And I'm so thankful that they are here to make this show happen. Thank you so much to all of our $5 a month patrons. You guys are wizards. You're champions. Thank you, everyone. You're heroes. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>